Spirit Druid saw a huge drop in popularity from Dragonflight Season 2 to Season 3. The main reason for this is that their damage is pretty weak, but the defenses and group utility they provide are still very good. Despite Bear Druid's issues, they remain a middle of the pack tank in terms of popularity. With the return of the Season 2 Bear Druid tier set bonuses in Season 4, I think the future looks very bright for Bear Druids, even if the recent past and present are disappointing. Hi there, it's Lerald, and today I'm going to talk about how to play Guardian Druid in Dragonflight Patch 10.2.5. Since it is the middle of the season, this will specifically be a guide oriented towards Mythic Plus. And with that being said, let's just get right into it. There are a couple of reasons that Bear Druids have struggled in this patch. First off, the Season 3 tier set bonus sucks. It's not horrible in Mythic Plus. It will provide you with a consistent defensive bonus, but it's just not very strong, and the damage contribution it gives is really, really badly made. You have to take a lot of damage over a long time to fully maximize this tier set's value, and that isn't a fun type of bonus or a particularly good type either. Second, Blood Frenzy was reworked. Instead of granting two rage every time Thrash ticks, it now grants three rage, but it is capped at five targets, whereas in Season 2 when Bear Druids were absolute kings of the game, it didn't have a target cap. This substantially reduces rage generation at the highest end of play. We're talking about being capped at 15 rage per tick, when you previously might have been getting 40 rage per tick. That's insane. But for lower level play, for more normal players just doing weekly keys, even like 22s or whatever, this was actually a buff. For pulls with 1-7 to seven targets at a time, you generate more rage per second from Blood Frenzy using the nerfed version than you did beforehand. But once you start fighting 8 enemies at once, you will generate less rage. Again, this is really only an issue that affects the highest possible ends of play because the difference between an 8 or a 10 target pull really isn't that noticeable. You're not going to miss out on 1 or 2 rage every 2 seconds. It only becomes a problem when you're trying to fight 20 mobs at once. Unfortunately for Bear Druids, the WoW community at large takes a lot of their cues from the high-end pushing community. This is totally reasonable. They are the best at Mythic Plus. It makes sense why they would kind of dictate things. But sometimes it doesn't really apply, like in this situation. I think the biggest remaining issues for Bear Druids right now are the design of dungeons in Season 3 and Vengeance Demon Hunters just being overpowered. There's not really a lot more to say about Vengeance Demon Hunter. It's insanely tanky, it deals tons of damage, it has a lot of crowd control, it's a perfect tank. As for Season 3 dungeons, there are a lot of caster mobs in them, and both Vengeance Demon Hunter and Prop Paladin are at a huge advantage over not just the other four tanks, but the other 34 specs in the entire game when it comes to dealing with interrupts. But now I want to put a positive spin on this because I still really like Bear Druid. And that is the positive here. Bear Druids are still in pretty good shape. The underlying class is good. The style of play they have is simple but very satisfying. They bring a ton of utility, they have good crowd control tools, and they can put out a lot of group healing. They're also still very tanky. I really I can't overstate that. The class is still hard to kill. Whatever criticisms of it that I can rightly have, like the tier set being boring and the damage being mid, it's still a very beefy tank that feels strong to play. And since this is a Mythic Plus tank guide, let's talk about Mythic Plus affixes. This is an area where Bear Druid really shines. You have something for every affix, which is a totally underrated aspect of Bear Druids. The group utility is just completely off the charts. You can help dispel Afflicted and Raging. You can off heal through Bursting. You can tank, kite, or crowd control bolstered mobs. You can hibernate in corporeal ads, although that is a bit annoying. You can use Stampeding Roar to help the group move out of Entangling more quickly. You can knock enemies out of Sanguine quickly with Typhoon and you can use Typhoon and Ursal's Vortex to lock down spiteful adds. Yeah, the group utility? Bananas. Now let's talk about Bear Druid's tier set bonuses, and here they are. The two-piece makes it so that Rage you spend during Rage of the Sleeper fuels the growth of Dream Thorns. They wreath you in their protection after Rage of the Sleeper expires, absorbing 25% of damage dealt to you while they remain, 
up to large number per 20 rage spent. The four piece makes it so that for each 40 rage you spend while Rage of the Sleeper is active, you extend its duration by one second up to five. So instead of a 10 second base duration, you can get up to 15 seconds. Your Dream Thorns also become Blazing Thorns, causing 100% of the damage they absorb to be reflected back at the attacker. The two piece bonus is extremely boring. It's basically uh, half of an ignore pain that lasts for 45 seconds. It provides no damage at all on its own, just damage reduction based on the rage you spend while Rage of the Sleeper is up. The four piece bonus thankfully converts that into some damage, but as you can see, it requires taking damage. You have to consume all of the absorb shield you generated from the two piece in order to maximize this tier set's value. You have 45 seconds to do it, which sounds reasonable, but it's very realistic to have some left on you when it expires. I've looked at millions of damage of Absorb Shield left on me when this shield expired. Very annoying. And I gave this feedback during the PTR. I certainly wasn't alone in it. The shield should explode for AoE damage when it expires so that at the very least, it doesn't waste that damage. Even if it did that, it would be an underpowered tier set. Unfortunately, that feedback was ignored and the class has been worse for it throughout this patch because of that. I can't put a good spin on this tier set bonus. I mean, I guess I could lie, but that is literally what it would take for me to say that this tier set bonus is good. It's bad. It has cast a dark cloud over an otherwise good tank. It's just a bad set bonus from top to bottom, and I look forward to replacing it next season and getting back to the way things were with Bear Druids. Now let's talk about talents. I only have one main talent set up to consider here, but there are some small tweaks that you want to make to deal with different affixes. Alright, so this is more or less the standard talent setup for Bear Druid in Mythic Plus. Now, you can make some changes here. Mostly those occur in the left hand tree, and they're really just about dealing with different affixes. I'll kind of walk through those in a second here, but this is pretty much the standard setup in the right hand tree. There's very little that you really want to change. And I mean, you can, but for mid-level, high-level Mythic Plus, we're talking 20s and up, this is almost completely set in stone. This is what pretty much everyone runs all the time. So in the left hand tree, you do have a couple of wiggle points here. Nurturing Instinct gives you 6% more magic damage and healing. You don't really do a lot of magic damage. So this is really just about, um, having more healing, which is okay. And you can take Innervate. This is very optional. You can put that point to Well-Honed Instincts for a little bit of cooldown reduction on that. But mainly, these swaps will occur. If you're doing low-level keys, they're super easy. You can swap into Rip and Feline Swiftness, 15% more move speed. That's It's just quality of life. That's all it is. But it is pretty nice if you're doing stuff that's not very challenging. On Afflicted Weeks or on Dungeons with a lot of Poison effects, which mainly I think of Everbloom and that's kind of it, you can take Remove Corruption. That is pretty good quality of life to have there. So taking Swiftman and Rejuvenation is pretty worthless, just like taking Starfire, Sunfire, and Moonkin form is kind of worthless and having to take Rip to get down to Feline Swiftness is generally pretty useless. It's definitely still a gripe I have about the Druid class tree that you spend so many points on worthless stuff traveling to get the things you want. But, you know, it is what it is. For dealing with incorporeal ads, you can take one point and hibernate, put the other two in Nurturing Instinct, and then there you go. Just drop that point out of inter uh, Innervate for hibernate, and that's pretty easy. Other than that, there's not really a ton of other great places to put that one point into if you were to just leave the two in Nurturing Instinct. So that's kind of why people take that Well-Honed Instincts point. It's not amazing. And then if you really want to add some juice onto your Dream of Scenarius, you can drop one point in Nurturing Instinct and take Protector of the Pack instead. It's not hugely valuable, but it is something that some uh, some druids will play with for getting a little bit more juice on their spot heals. Now in the right hand tree, Dream of Scenarius has kind of taken on the, I guess the sort of the dominant role now. It is a preferred talent in this tree, and that's about the only change from last season. You do have to spend one point somewhere in this upper two thirds of the tree to get down to the really juicy stuff down here at the bottom. That's all pretty much set in stone. The only other option to Dream of Scenarius would be Ursoc's Endurance to get two more seconds on Barkskin and Iron Fur, and that's really not all that valuable. It does have a damage contribution to it, though. In Thorns of Iron, you'll have a little bit more Iron Fur uptime, so you get a little bit more damage out of your Thorns of Iron from overlapping Iron Furs. And also, it means you don't have to spend as much Rage on Iron Fur, so you can spend a little bit more Rage on Rays. 
but it doesn't add up to all that much, and the ability to throw spot heals on other players, or into yourself, because you can sit and hold the Dream of Scenarius proc for a while, and then throw it into yourself when you need it, rather than just using it immediately, that is pretty good. All told, that is about all that there really is to it, in terms of talent options in this right-hand tree, though. The only other option I would say you could consider in the right-hand tree would be improved survival instincts, and I think that's generally worse than Ursoc's Endurance if you're just wanting to go with the kind of the lazy low impact approach. I would go with Ursoc's Endurance for a bit more control, a bit more healing, and definitely more group utility. Dream of Scenarius is the better choice because you can throw it onto other people. It doesn't just have to go into yourself. All right, that's pretty much that on talents. Now let's talk about the core abilities in your rotation. Mangle, Thrash, Raise, and Moonfire are your most important rotational skills. You want to use Thrash on cooldown, Mangle on cooldown after that, and maintain the Moonfire debuff on enemies. If you have a Tooth and Claw empowered Maul cast available, you should spend that on Maul in single target or Raise in AoE. Maul and Raise are separate keybinds. You will talent into Raise, of course, and Mythic Plus. They're separate keybinds, but they functionally serve the same purpose. They are your offensive Rage Spender. Swipe is mainly only useful as a fallback skill when nothing else of value is available, or if you really, really, really need to keep AoEing in order to grab threat, maybe you've just cast Thrash and then there are some newly spawned adds come in, you might want to swipe them just so that they don't go eat the healer. Again, Raze and Maul are your offensive rage spenders. Raze is for AoE, Maul is for single target. They both deal a lot of damage, and they shield you for 45% of the damage that they deal. So you want to use them as much as you can reasonably afford. The biggest bit of gameplay depth for Bear Druids is figuring out exactly how much Rage you'd need to spend on Iron Fur and how much you will have left over to spend on Raze or Maul. In terms of how you spend your Rage, most of the time when you're tanking you should try to maintain at least one stack of Iron Fur, maybe two. If you're taking a lot of damage, such as on some higher level keys on Fortified Weeks or toward the end of a bolstering pull, you probably want to push that Iron Fur button a little harder, just go to three stacks or more, but really your goal is to use Rays as much as you can afford without letting Iron Fur completely fall off. There are some situations when you might not be taking any physical damage at all, maybe you're just fighting a caster mob, just dealing with spell damage, something like that. In those cases, Iron Fur isn't really going to do anything, so you can just totally lay on your Rays or Maul keybind there, but those situations are fairly rare. Now let's talk about healing. After the Wildfire provides a lot of group healing and it's all fairly passive. Other than that, you just want to use Frenzied Regeneration whenever you need a heal, and you have Renewal as an off GCD self heal as well. It's pretty simple, but very strong, basically a reusable health stone. Now let's move on to Bear's cooldowns. They're strong but simple. Unless you're holding Incarnation and Rage of the Sleeper for a specific purpose, maybe you're nearing the end of a pull and you have a big pull ahead of you, you should try to use both of these on cooldown. When possible, you want to try to overlap the two of them. They obviously have very different cooldowns, so you're going to get more Rage of the Sleeper casts than you will Incarnations, but when possible, you want to overlap them as they will act as a force multiplier and give you a lot more damage when used together than when spread out. During Incarnation, you still want to cast Raze or Mangle as much as you can afford. They are 50% off yeah, without a coupon, so that makes it quite a bit easier to really hit Raze a lot. You still want to cast Thrash and Mangle as much as you need to to keep generating the Rage to use Raze, but the real goal here is to just Raze or Maul as much as you can. You still want to stack up Thrash to 5 stacks initially for that damage and damage reduction bonus, and then you maintain Thrash or Moonfire during that time, but your goal during this window will be to cast as many Raises or Mauls as you can. This will maximize both your damage output and your damage reduction. Now let's move on to defensive cooldowns. Incarnation and Rage of the Sleeper are also defensive cooldowns. They're offensive cooldowns primarily, that is the way you use them and think about them and plan the timing on using them, but they add a lot of defensive value too. Incarnation gives you 30% more health and a massive amount of increased rage generation as well as reducing rage costs and making your frenzied regeneration have no cooldown while it's active, so it's really hard to die during Incarn. Rage of the Sleeper just gives you 25% damage reduction, but that's pretty good, quite a bit, and it does have synergy with your 
not that great tier set bonus to make it add some extra shielding after the fact, so there's something there. Bark Skin and Survival Instincts are your two other main defensive cooldowns. They're both very simple. If you know you're going to take a lot of damage, you use them to reduce it. That's pretty much it. Bark Skin has a really short cooldown relative to how much damage reduction it provides, and so I really like to lay on it a lot at the start of Dangerous Pulls. I pretty much want to have Bark Skin up at the start of every single Dangerous Pull I possibly can, but certainly any ones where I don't have Incarnation or Rage of the Sleeper available, I would like to use Bark Skin at the start to get my health sort of stabilized and get the pull secured. Now let me go over Group Utility. Ursal's Vortex is really good for dealing with adds that fixate, such as spiteful adds. There are a lot of them in Season 3 dungeons, so this is a skill that you can use in a lot of places. Hibernate is useful during incorporeal weeks, and it will not shift you out of bear form to cast, so it's a decent option if you don't have better choices in your group like monks or mages. Incapacitating Roar is a very basic AoE crowd control on a 30 second cooldown. It's an incapacitate, not a stun. And that's is actually kind of a positive because you can use it as an impromptu AoE interrupt or whatever, and it won't put other stuns on the diminishing return. In the past, Nature's Vigil was a pretty good group healing cooldown. It was nerfed a while back though, and I don't really think it's worth using most of the time now. Similarly, Innervate is an option you can use, but it's not really as critical to have in Mythic Plus as it is in raids, and most bear druids don't take it. Now let's talk about how to pull on a bear druid. If you have incarnation available, you run in, thrash and mangle, then pop incarnation and rage of the sleeper, thrash, raise, thrash, mangle, and hit iron fur while you're all doing that. If you need to cast frenzied regen to get your health stable, you do that too. If you don't have incarnation available, you want to run in, use thrash and bark skin as your first skills in melee range, hit mangle, and start swiping it up until you can get either mangle or thrash available, and start generating rage to cast iron fur and raise. You want to apply moonfire to everything in a pull that you can, but hitting skills like thrash, mangle, and raise to deal direct damage immediately is more important at the start of a pull to establish your initial threat, since they will deal that upfront damage and generate a lot more threat than the initial hit of a moonfire. In terms of stats, agility is your best stat, so maximizing your item level is the most important aspect of gearing, with secondary stat balance being… secondary. As for enchants, gems, and crafted gear, you want to enchant and gem for versatility, then haste as your second best secondary stat. Mastery and crit are still good stats, there really isn't a bad secondary stat for bears. Crit is probably the least reliable defensively, but it's good for overall damage reduction and great for damage output. Mastery is the weakest offensively, but it's the best at increasing your effective health and helping you live through spell damage. They're all pretty good. Haste feels the best, it's the most fun, since you get more abilities off in a given span of time by having more haste, but versatility does the most overall in terms of giving you damage reduction, healing, and damage output. Bear Druids are still very fun. They may have fallen out of the meta due to the current state of class tuning, Vengeance is overpowered, and Bear Druids underwhelming tier set bonuses, but the underlying class is still really, really good. The group utility is incredible, they're extremely tanky, and they're just a fun, simple class to play. I'm still a really big fan, and I believe that the future of Season 4 is super bright for bears. Alright, that is it. Thanks for watching. Bye.